that time spot that time part two part two break that psychosis y'all ready let's get it let's get it let's get it straight to it Peace and love to all the Moors, all the Asiatics, all the Muslims, all y'all out there. This is part two to break the, the mental psychosis that our people got. Listen, we gonna be moving all around through so-called time. Do your best to keep up, turn your screen recorder on, take some notes, all right? Are you repping your flag? Are you repping the Moorish flag? You repping this? You repping your nation? Are you still dealing with crayon colors, beliefs and feelings? You ready? Let's go. Straight to it. Europe, the Alcubalan Penitentiary. From the book, The Exhuming of a Nation, Supreme Honor to the Prophet, Noble Drew Ali. A lot of people got questions like, well, how did our people get like in the position that we in right here? So we're going to have to go do a little research. Let's do a little research together. Each one teach one. So we say our Cooper line, right? Now, this is where it's at. Europe. Now, keep in mind, though, before we begin, keep in mind, Europe was first our people. The Iberian Peninsula, so-called Europe over there, was dark complexion moors. Okay. Dark complexion Moors, like the King of the Scots, King Charles II, Britain, Ireland, all of these are our people. Queen Sophia Charlotte, this is all, all our people. We ran the whole world. Keep that in mind, okay? We on page 113 if you got this book right here. OK, we got to keep we got to keep stuff in, in mind. OK, Europe, one of the Earth's seven continents, the only one not beginning with the letter A is Europe. The continent of Europe was named after the African Cometan Moorish Egyptian Queen Europa. All right, let's go. Let's go. In English translation, the root word of Europe is rope which is anything twisted together for the purpose of confinement. Europe, the second largest continent, became the natural ordained prison for the African clones whom had become so opposed to the Mother Earth and her creator, they had to be cast out of the Garden of Eden. Who are they talking about? Let's keep going. Who are they talking about? Who are they talking about? Hmm? These outcasts had become hardened in warlike thought patterns, conflicting to the universal harmonies of life. So infested with leprosy and other experimental diseases until the kisses of sun rays was made their natural enemy. Hmm. Who are they talking about? They were Europeans and they were slaves. Let me know where y'all tuning in from on this beam out too. Share this out. Oh yeah, you're going to want to share this out. So as you see, let's backtrack. Europe was first ran by Queen Europa. She was an African Cometan, Moorish Egyptian queen. Queen Europa. This is where so-called Europe gets his name from. This is where Europa gets his name from over here. Queen Europa ran this whole continent. OK, this was all ran by a Moorish queen. Her name was Queen Europa. So 
keep in mind, like we saying, Europe, the first, the first, the very first Europeans were dark complexion, olive complexion, swarthy complexion, tawny complexion. They were Moors. They were not what we know today as modern day Europeans. No, the modern day Europeans were not there. And when we brought them there, we had to bring them there because of various leprosy, the skin conditions. Look at the weather out there in Europe. It's cloudy, it's rainy, it's foggy. It's not as hot as it will be in another part of the region of the world. So this is the place where we put them at. You feel me? So watch, let's go. We gotta know who the slaves was first and who we not, okay? Queen Europa, keep that in mind. She was a Moorish African commanding queen. All right, so let's go. Let's go, fam. Then we go right here with it. So we say she was the queen out there and the African clones, the African clones, hybrid European. These are hybrid Europeans. They're not the OG Europeans. All right. The originals were our people, which is here. The Orientals are our people. The Occidentals are these people. We got to recognize who we are and who, who they not. See, this is the thing about knowing the law, birthrights and nationality. When you know who you are, you saying who you not. In that moment in time, once you know you are more, once you know this is your flag, once you know what principles you stand on, once you know that noble Jawali, he brought back the information for us to have the instructions to navigate our way on the planet with law and history. You see? So when you say who you are, you automatically canceling out who you not. This is why nationality is the order of the day. Exercising law. Straight back to the book, though. Watch this. See, when you say who you are, you saying you got five fifth components of a natural person. This is when you say who you are. Now, you know how they said three fifths of a man. They used to say three fifths of a man. They took that out for purposes of manipulation. So now instead of saying three fifths of a man, they just say color person person of color you gotta you gotta recognize the chess moves all right so we gonna we gonna go straight to this and you see the five fifth components of a natural man a natural woman a living being all right you have a spirit you have a soul you have a body you have a nationality and you have a creed this is the five fifth components of a natural living being this is the flag of the five components of a natural living being, a nation. This here, this is our flag, all right? So you go right here to it, and you say this. Straight here. Jump back in the time machine. Go to this book right here. The so-called Negro rulers of Scotland and the British Isles. This is why you got to study law and history together. OK, now, as we see, we're talking about Europe, right? We brought the so-called hybrid Europeans to Europe as a penitentiary. Watch this. But they tell us everything else like they enslaved us first. No, sir. We enslaved them, but we shouldn't have enslaved them, though. We end up paying for that. Because we shouldn't enslave them though. But they end up paying for it because they enslaved us. As POW, prisoners of war. Let's get to it. Around 1500 BC, Europe had gradually changed from an all Moorish populace inhabitant to a multiracial continent. Remember how we were talking about Queen Europa? Now we talking about Queen Europa. Keep her in mind now. She ran things out there. She was a Moorish queen. Okay, keep that in mind at all times. This was the prison 
for the Albions. Okay? Now, in the time machine in the 1500s now, every European nation prior to the presence of Europeans, hybrids, these are hybrids. Okay, we gotta keep the we gotta I'm know I'm gonna keep saying that because we gotta get this in our minds. Because the school system has they did a number on us, giving us misinformation. So when we look at these people, they are hybrid Europeans. They're not the OG Europeans. They're the Albions. Okay? They're not white people. All right? So look, then you say, it say, it was ruled by the indigenous Africans who were called the Moors. Bing bong. You see, this is in the 1500s, though. Check the time machine. Check the dates out. 1500s and in, in where? In Europe, which goes directly to Queen Europa in the earlier time. So you would say we ran stuff around the world and we brought pale face Europeans to Europe as a penitentiary because of the leprosy of their skin. They couldn't live nowhere else. Because they'll get burned up by the sun rays. Because the sun rays are the natural enemy of the Albions. They cook up in the sun. That's why they can't be in the sun like that. That's why they want to get artificial suntans. And put sunscreen, sun cream on and all that type of stuff. Alright? Then we go, we just go further. Let's, let's go further. So what it say? Turn it up. It say during their dominance of Europe, the powerless hybrid Europeans gradually increased their population to become Europe's majority, but lacked the social structure to find equality among their Moorish superiors. We're not black. Don't fall for that. We're not black. We got to break that color spell. They're not white. And we're not black. We got to snap that color spell. That mental psychosis is being broken right now. We dealing with nationality only. All right. They're not white. And our people are not black. We're not black people. We're Moors. They're Albions. Hybrid Europeans. Hybrid Caucasians. All right, we breaking this spell. We breaking spells right now. Let's go. So then you will say the Moorish monarchs of Europe brutally inflicted a cruel op slave apartheid. Keep this in mind, okay? This is what our people did because we had political power. We had power on the planets. Always keep this in mind. Moorish people are a world people. We're a world people. We ran both sides of the world. This side of the world as well as this side of the world. All of this land. We all we ran all of this. But what we did was what something that we shouldn't have done. We cooked up something known as a cruel slave apartheid upon the disadvantaged and innocent hybrid Europeans. Because keep in mind, these people were slaves. They didn't have no political power. They didn't have nothing in these times. They had nothing. They've always been in bondage and slaves. All right? This is why you're not going to hear this in the school system. Because think about it. Why would the school system let this information out the bag? They would have to rewrite the history books that they rewrote. So they like, nah, you know what? Take all them books that pale face Europeans were slaves. Put them on the back of the shelf somewhere. Matter of fact, burn as many of them as you can. Don't let none of them. Don't let none of them books out. But let's keep going, though. So it's a. Their genocidal inhumane atrocities were severely imposed without a measure of mercy and can only be compared with a reversed apartheid placed upon the Africans 
many centuries later. You see? So we put a cruel slave apartheid on these people, but karma, the law of retribution, was like, nah, no, sir. Since y'all enslaved slave them, we're going to turn that, slain, that same slave apartheid onto our people, onto y'all, the Moors, so-called Africans, many centuries later. So what happened? What happened? What ended up happening? What ended up, what ended up happening? Right here. This ended up happening. This right here. This right here. It said a late a later, what it say? It says a retribution for the inhumane treatment placed upon Europe. When Africa was its master. When Africa was its master. Exactly. So you reap what you sow. That is real. You reap what you sow. So our people reap what they sow because we was in power around the world and we was enslaving pale faced Europeans. So the law of karma, the law of retribution, flipped it around as a slave apartheid on us. All right. But you might say, like, why? Why did we first enslave them? Why would you want to enslave anybody? Why do people enslave people today? Think about it. Why do people slave, enslave people today? Why would somebody want a prisoner today? People don't learn from the past. They repeat the past thinking they could change something different, but they got the same formula that failed in the past. History repeats itself if you don't change what you did in the past. It's going to repeat itself. All right. Now watch this. So it say. Had today's so-called Negroes avoided the process of being brainwashed. Concerning their own history, they would have understood that over three millenniums ago, the so-called white man, the hybrid Europeans, the Caucasian hybrids. What did it say about them? It said that they were under the Moorish man's supremacy and the Moorish woman's supremacy and addressed the Moorish man and women. As master, my lord, sir, queen, imperial, his majesty or her majesty. This is what we was on here. The King of Scott. Y'all know that show on Netflix. Queen Charlotte. Who you think that is right there? Like, for real. Like who, who, who do you think that is? Who do you think that is? When none of these people, none of these people have ever been in political power. None of them. None of them. That's why they don't want to get the keys up right now. But it's over with, though, because Allah has already deemed it to be. It's already over with. So they trying to hold on to political power. But then you would say, like, well, how did these people come into this political power? How they come into political power? And you ever notice, you ever notice how hybrid Europeans and other people around the planet, other nationalities, even though they might be Moors, they might be Asiatic, they might be Asians. You ever notice how they got some kind of like a resentment towards us, especially pale faced Europeans. Some of them, not all of them, but a lot of them is because of what we did to them. So they still hold on to a, a lot of them still hold on to the resentment that our ancestors did to them. We enslaved them first. They didn't enslave us first. How? They weren't even here. So who was here? It was just our people that was here. So our people turned on their own people just like they're doing today. Keep in mind, history repeats itself if you don't learn from the past. So our people was hating on their own people, just like our people hate on their own people today. It's 
more of our people on the planet than it is these people. These just facts. It's more of us on the planet than it is these people. So you would say, well, how did these people, what happened? Good question. What happened? Let's go. I would say the Bible, people love talking about the Bible, the Bible phrases, which indicates that slaves should obey their masters were first deceivingly applied to the peasant pale face Europeans by their Moorish masters, along with other scriptures. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal or lie, nor bear arms for self-defense. Look at look, look, look at what they did. They used the so-called Bible. It's nothing wrong with the Bible. Prophet Noble Joali said, Moors, don't throw your Bibles out. I'm going to use it to condemn the government. So it's nothing wrong with the Bible. It's a science book. But you can manipulate these words if you are seeking power over somebody else. See? So when they said, nor bear arms for self-defense, why do you think they got something out here where you like, you see one of our people, Moors, you see us, we got to get it. You got to get a license. You got to get a license to carry. See, is for power and control. That's what the licenses is for. They unconstitutional, they unlawful. But if you keep people in a state of mental darkness, they not gonna realize it. Why? Because they're too busy being entertained. Like the movie, you seen it. What fool was talking about in Gladiator? Are you not entertained? If you got 8 billion people on the planet that's entertained, too busy in their phones, taking selfies, making videos, watching goofy shit. They not thinking, they entertained. So since they entertained, they not thinking about law. Damn sure ain't thinking about history. Damn sure ain't thinking about what can we do to change something? Like declaring a nationality because the entertainment, school system, it's a it's a it's a conglomerate of miseducation devices that's pushed on the population. So look, right? Or they too busy working? They ain't got no time to think. You working all the time? You ain't you coming home? You trying to put your feet up, watch the game, chill out? You know what I'm saying? So then you would say this right here. It say these same misrepresented tactics were deceptively practiced upon the so-called Negro prior and after the African slave trade, a process used to perpetuate apartheid, which was invented by the, the, the Moorish masters of Europe. Wow. Fam, the slave apartheid was invented by our people. Fam, the entire slave apartheid system was created by us. Whether you want to say Israelites, Moors, you want to say whatever you want to say as a so-called name. Whatever you want to say as a so-called name. It was invented by our people. We invented the system. But because we invented the system... It was a law of retribution. The law of retribution, the tables always turn. So when the table turn and karmatic debt hit us because we was doing it to them, this is what happened. Everything flipped. Everything flipped. So they went from being this to enslaving mentally our people. You know, this ain't nobody walking around with no chains, but it's still a chain with the mind. The mind, our, our people's minds are still chained up mentally. There's no physical change no more because once you can enslave somebody's mind, you don't need no physical change no more. Why? People got enslaved by the brain. It's invisible change now. You don't need no chain no more physically. People chained up to their phones. People chained up to their tablets, to their computers, to their laptops, to their jobs, to their vices. 
invisible chains, distractions. It's invisible. Look, you go right here with it, right? You might be saying like, well, how did they flip the narrative and get us and get them from being in these chains to then our people being up in these chains? What happened? What what was the flip? Good question. It was during the French Revolution of A.D. 1789 that ended the Moorish power dominance in Europe. You see, look at the date. 1789. You see the date? 1789, right? Hold up. 1789. Turn you up. 1789. Look at the date. Now, I want to show y'all something. 1789, right? Look. 1789. Keep this in your head. This is the French Revolution. OK, and keep in mind, the first French were dark complexion Moors. So-called black, but we are Moors. Keep this in mind. The first of everything on this planet, whether you want to deal with a flat earth or you want to deal with a round. Everybody on this planet at one point in time was dark complexion. Olive complexion. They were not pale face Europeans. They didn't even exist yet. And when they did exist, they did not have political power. They had no social structure of political power. So they couldn't do nothing. They weren't in a monarchy. They was not sitting on no thrones. But Hollywood will make it look like that, right? Hollywood will make it look like anything on a big screen. It'll make it look like anything. Like they always was in political power. Yeah. Yeah. Watch this. Watch this. You say you think they was in political power. Okay. Now you see this date, right? 1789. It ended the Moorish power dominance in Europe. Now, on this side of the world, while that was happening over here in Europe, what you think was happening over here in the Americas? You see, watch what happened in the same time period of the 1700s in Europe and then over here. Look at the time thing. Watch the time. That's 1789, right? Now, jump to this right here. The so-called Negro question part four, the missing link. All right. Now, keep in mind, all these people that you see, the King of Scots, dark complexion. The King Charles II, dark complexion. Britain, dark complexion. Mulatto complex. This is what you have. Mulattoes, Melungians, Queen Sophia Charlotte. Okay, Portuguese Moors, olive complexion. Look at this, though. So we wasn't running it. Then you would say, well... Where your proof at, Kush? Who was running it then? Look, America as a land of opportunity. Written by Benjamin Franklin, 1751. Check the timeline. 1751 now. We just said 1789 was over here when the Moorish power, it ended, right? French Revolution. So on this side of the world, you will say this. You will say, well, well wait a minute. Whoa, what was going on over there? You say this right here. Say this right here. It says all Africa is tawny, so-called black. Asia, chiefly tawny, so-called black. America, exclusive of the newcomers. Did you catch that line? America, exclusive of the newcomers. Who are the newcomers? These are the newcomers. Ah, these are the newcomers. These people are the newcomers. Wagwan. These pale faced Europeans are the newcomers, Morse. They wasn't here. 
They was not here because keep in mind, America is the true old world. So how could they be like us if they was called by Benjamin Franklin in his own words, in his own book? He says, America exclusive of the newcomers. Wholly so. Who you think the newcomers is? Bing bong. These are the newcomers, the pale skinned Europeans. Do them on the Quaker Oats box. Yeah, that part. Ta. Do them on the Quaker Oats box. That's who Benjamin Franklin talking about. 1751. But we allegedly lost power in 1789. Where? In Europe. You see what's going on? So these things was happening. These events was happening on both sides of the world. One side of the world was banging. The other side of the world was going through it too. But we still have political power around the world. This is when things started to really start crumbling. Since 1492, these things have really been starting to crumble because of the slave apartheid that we did to these people. To these people, pale skinned Europeans. And the sellouts within our own people, what they selling out for? Why do people sell out right now? Ask yourself, answer your own question. Why do people sell out right now? Because they obviously got some kind of greed, hatred. They got some kind of lust. They got some kind of form of control they want to have. They got some form of power that they trying to acquire. This is why they're trying to acquire power. This is why people sell out their own people to this day. It's control, fam. It's control. That's why you got to study the past to know the history. So you ain't going to get finesse out of your shoes because you study the moves of the past. Can't nobody finesse you if you study the moves of the past. That's like you driving down the street somewhere and you from that neighborhood. So you know, like, hey, if you go down over there, on Stony Island in Chicago, you you pull up over there, hey, it's potholes all over the place. Crazy. But if you ain't from here, you over there, you're going to drive, you're going to think going a regular speed limit, flying over there, that's what you're supposed to do until your shit get towed off. <laughs> see, because you're not from over there. You drive down 119th, you're going to see them speed cameras out there. But if you ain't knowing because you ain't from over there, you're going to fly right past there. You ain't even going to be knowing what it is because you're not from over there. This is the same thing that happens with our people. If you don't study the past, you're going to get finessed by sellouts. Telling you you're a crayon color. Telling you that you're a Pan-African. Matter of fact, they're telling you that you're an American-African. So they, they went from telling people they was African-Americans. So not a little... The new fake narrative is calling people American Africans. What? <laughs> Yo. Yo. You still going to fall for these games? Fam, you still finna get finessed with these games, G? Come on, man. Like, that shit dead. Look. Oh, ben oh Benji. Oh, Benji boy over here. Benji boy Franklin. He talking about in 1751 that what? In Europe, the Spaniards, French, Italians, Russians, and Swedes are generally of what we call a swarthy so-called black complexion. So are the Germans also. <sighs> so you see? You see? All of these nations... That I'm showing you right here. In 1751. They were all Moorish. They were all dark complexion Moors. Spain, France, Italy, Russia, Sweden, Germany, and America. Were dark complexion Moors. 1751. Bing bong. But... But what happened though? But what happened though? The nation of Berlin. Now nah, I ain't I ain't finna hit you with that yet. I'm gonna hold off. I'm gonna hold off on that. 
I'm going to keep that loaded up in the cartridge. <laughs> I'm going to keep that one loaded up. Hold that thought though. Hold, hold it. Hold this thought right here. Hold this thought right here. I want you to hold that. All these nations right here in Europe were all dark complexion Moors. I'm going to let you hold that real quick though. I'm going to let you hold that. Hold on to that real quick. Watch this then. What did it say? What did it say right here? All right, what did it say right here? It say, the oppressed, pale-faced Europeans took the law in their own hands and reversed the cruel art of apartheid to punish the very so-called blacks who invented its use. So the pale-faced Europeans in 1789 they flipped the, the slave system. The apartheid was flipped to the Moorish royal families. Ah, what? 1789. This is in Europe because we ran everything. So you say these people not only flipped on the so-called royal Moorish families. So what the so-called this is where it's finna get crazy at y'all. So what do you think that the so-called royal Moorish families did to remain in power? What do you think they did? This is what I'm talking about, about people who love power. They love control. What do you think they did? Take a, take a wild guess on what you think they did, fam. You know what they did. You know what they did. You know what they did. What they do? They sold out. They sold out. But how did they sell out and how did they get away with it? That part. How did they do it? Mm. Let's go. You want to find out? Let's go. Let's find out together. Let's find out together how in 1789, when the hybrid Europeans, when they started to uprise, what did they do? What did they do? All right. What did they do? 1789. What they do? It say, in order for these Moorish royal families to remain in power, they whitened themselves and their children to soften the rage of the pale skin revolutionists. Ah. They whitened them themselves. What? This is how the, this is the sellouts. The sellouts then is selling out today. This shit is crazy. Look. So what they do? They whiten up their skin. So they blend it in with the uprising pale face Europeans. And this is a practice that continues to this day. It is plainly understood that a people who lack knowledge of themselves becomes a burden to themselves and human progress. Most world leaders and academians are well aware of a once Moorish supremacy of Europe, African supremacy of Europe. Nevertheless, to protect their honor, pride or pseudo ethnocentric views their beliefs are systematically kept from the public damn the overall truth is that the african forefathers of the universe whether called niger negro or more ingeniously pioneered the world from the stone age to the ultra structure of modern civilization what? No, it's not a dream. It's not a dream either. It's not a magic trick. It's not, it's not none of that. We ran this whole planet. See the Scottish and British Isles and all that? Who you think was running that? Who you think was running that? King James? King James of the Bible was a dark complexion more. This is him you looking at. 
except his picture has been whitewashed to look like a pale face European hybrid. He was a dark complexion more. I'm going to show you this. Look at his ear. Look at his ears. You see, they couldn't wash out everything. See his ears up there? They, they, couldn't, they couldn't whitewash everything out of there. So they had to keep some of the stuff that was in there. You know what I'm saying? They couldn't, they couldn't wash it all up out of there. They couldn't wash it all out. So look. Watch this right here then. So let's say, what do you say right here? You say this. When Ethiopia and Egypt were at the peak of their cultural development, Europe was a wilderness. London, Paris, Athens, and Rome were swamplands and vacant sites, which goes right back over here to Europe being the al Kubalan penitentiary for the pale-faced Europeans. The African clones. You see this? See this? These people are not white people. That slave brand narrative has to be purged out of our collective minds. Never call these people white people. Ever. Why you would say that, Kush? Because white is a title of nobility. White is a status in law. White means the ruler of the lands. Europeans can never be the rulers of the land if Moorish people are aboriginal and indigenous to the planet. Bing bong. So yeah, you would say, what you would say? 96% of all European and American filmmaking regarding a pale faced European rule is a fake. It's a fraud. What the world perceives as an ancient so-called European hybrid civilization was in reality Africoid, which means Moorish. Oh, which means Moorish. Dark complexion, olive complexion, tawny complexion. That's you and me. We ran the whole world, but instead of us running the world, taking care of business, you have sellouts who didn't want to go along with the just just go along with the plan and just take care of business. You have people that was that was they were so power hungry. Everybody who look like you ain't for you. How many times you gonna hear that? All skin folk ain't kin folk. This is what that means. This is a problem with our people because our people today are doing the same things that our people did in the past. But not knowing it is dangerous because if you don't know, they're going to finesse you again. They're going to get down on you again. When I say you, I'm talking about that plurally. I mean our people. All right. So look, exactly. Copper complexion, olive complexion, golden complexion. This is what it is. Share this beam out. Then you will see this right here. Then you will say. The French essayist and mora or moralist Jean de la Bure. He said the exact contrary of what is generally believed is often the truth. Ain't that the truth? Ain't, ain't that the truth, though? Ain't, ain't that the truth? Hold up. Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? Nah. No, we're not done. Watch this. Time travel in the same period of time right now. All right? Do your best to keep up. I know we moving around. Do your best to keep up, though. I appreciate all y'all out there tuning in in real time and the ones that's going to receive, too. All right? Watch this, though. So... We seeing what was going on with our people. We ran it. All this we was running. 1500s. We was running Europe. All right. Lays Islam. Then you would say this. In the same time period, what was going on over here in Europe too? All of this was going on around the same time. The French Revolution. 
Then you would come over here to Europe again. And then you would say in the late 16th century, the English parliament empowered magistrates to enslave the British poor. Who are the British poor? These people. The hold up. You got to see pictures. You got you got to I got to make it real. I got to make it real for you. You got to see pictures. See, when you see these pictures, you're going to be like, OK, now I see what you're talking about. You got You got to see pictures, fam. See, when you see these pictures and make it real. When you see these pictures, it just make it real, fam. Where you at? Where you at, man? Ah, uh, where you at? You see these pictures? See, when you see these pictures, it just make it just make everything pop out. All right. When you see these pictures, they make everything pop out. So around this time, these were the people that were being enslaved in Europe and around the world. They was not dark complexion people. Keep in mind, slave is short for Slovakian, Slavic, Scandinavian, hybrids and all that. That's these people. So we put them in slavery around the world. That's why we have so much retribution come back to us. Because of the shit we was doing. Alright. These were the little the slaves that we had in bondage. We had them working in factories, fam. We did great things and we did a lot of terrible things. Great and terrible things. Alright? So when you say slaves, these were the first slaves because they're Slovakians. They're Slovakian Eastern European descent. You might think that this is a, a plantation owner. No, sir. This is a sharecropper. He's a sharecropper. He's an actual worker on a slave plantation owned by our people, Moors. Exactly. You got to take the positive with the negative. But in order to turn it from a positive to a negative, we got to know the we got to know the past. You got to know the history. You don't know the history. You would think that these people enslaved us first. You would think these people are white people and you will continue to violate universal law and call them white people. They not white people. You got to break that psychosis. You cannot call them white people. You can never call them white people. That's a violation of law. Hold up. Can never call these people white people. Ever. Can never call them white people. So let's go. Here we go right over here. So-called blacks in Hollywood and other movie industries. What do they do? They continue to whiten themselves to win the favor of who? Of these people. This is why they do what they do. This is what they do. Okay, so let's go over here. Let's go right on. Let me show. I got, I got some video footage. I'm gonna show y'all some video footage. Let's go. They decided to erode our civilization via entertainment by getting people to go along with the mythos. And then using the mythos to act in his story. He had, um. Check it out. The whole plan, everything you know about the story, about the transatlantic slave trade, the, 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 the whippings, the plantations. Like you ever notice when you watch the movies about the slaves and the plantations, the slaves was never chained up. They was all walking around the plantation like they was <laughs> free and shit. Like they could just walk out. Yeah. Yeah. Like. You think about that. So you mean to tell me this whole plantation mine is the only point that, and it's only like one or two white men, one white man on a horse with a gun, right? right. Another two white men around walking around with whips and shit. But for the most part, the slaves outnumber them 10 to one, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, like so, how that work? 
Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't like when you see the slave, like when you see slave movies and the slaves picking the cotton, you don't see the white man walking up with the whip, ripping them on the back while they're picking the cotton. No, what you see, you see the slaves, allegedly, slaves, right, picking the cotton themselves. Yeah. Right. And every so often you see a white man on a horse with a gun walking around, right? So this is what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say that if you are enslaved in a situation like that and you have been generationally enslaved, they want to say that you don't have the perception to realize that you were already free, that you could walk out. So if that happened then, what's the difference between then and now? <laughs> we're in the same situation now. Only thing is worse because now we've been entrained to believe that the things that Mr. Salisbury and Buffalo Bill and these niggas showed us was actually real. Because of yeah. Exactly. That brother right there, Master Tisha, that's a seer of the Duke of Tears. He been doing it for years. Show him some love. I said the Duke of Tears, Islam. So I'm gonna show y'all this. Who was the slaves? The Irish were slaves. Look, now we're talking about the Irish hybrids. Keep in mind, the Irish hybrids, not the dark complexion. These were the Irish hybrid slaves. All right? Then you would say, who else? The Protestant slaves. All right. Now, what does it say about King Charles II in 1686? He say legislation sponsored by King Charles II, 1686, intended to ensure the enslavement of Protestant rebels in the Caribbean colonies was so harsh that one observer noted the condition of these rebels was by this act made as bad, if not worse than the so-called Negroes. Damn. That book is called Acts Past in the Island of Barbados. Another dope book you can get about Barbados will be this book right here. Get this book right here. Oh, let me get it for you. Hold on, let me get it out. This book right here. Crazy. To Hell or Barbados. The ethnic cleansing of Ireland. This book right here goes so crazy. That, that book right there goes so crazy. Take a screenshot. Get that book. Matter of fact, I'm going to bring it over here. Hold on, let me throw this phone on the charger. Hold up. How much time we got? Right, let me throw this phone on the charger real quick. Hold up. Hold up. Give me one second. Let me throw this phone on the charger. Keep going for a little minute before we get up out of here. Keep going for a little, for a little minute before we, before we close out. All right. Let me see this over here. So watch this. Then you will say this right here. Keep these time frames in mind. 1600s, 1500s, 1700s. Keep these time frames in mind. All right. So it say, by far the largest number and certainly the most important group of pale skin indentured servants were the poor Protestants from Europe. Now, keep in mind how we still talking about Europe. Right. We still talking about Europe. Queen Europa. We still talking about the Moorish monarchs who ruled Europe. We still talking about that. We still talking about that. All right. Now, look, you will say this right here, though. So what happened? What happened? Let's fast forward. Put them over here. Who for you? This coming off the slave ships. You seen the using the 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 so-called white or Caucasoid race as the lynch people and take land and fight for us against us. Listen. And that's what they've been doing. But they've been using the 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 so-called white or Caucasoid race as the linchpin to do it because the people who are who have the backs in the white people's backs are the blacks. Yeah. Are the boule European blacks that yeah. first came over here. You hear him? Listen. The people who are, who have the backs in the white people's backs are the blacks. Yes. Are the Boulay European blacks 
that first came over here with their white European slaves, married into our families, created a whole gen first generation of, of uh, amalgamated European Moors from indigenous Moors, married... Okay, now, put that in context for y'all. Now, what it says is talking about is exactly on point. He's saying that, remember, over there in, in Europe, you had that side of the world, they was going through it. But they had the French Revolution. The French Revolution was going on in 1789. So since the French Revolution was going on, remember, the hybrid pale-skinned Europeans had an uprise. 1780, 1789. So they started getting taught to take shit. From the so-called Moorish monarchs who were in political power, and the and the so the the Moorish monarchs they saw it coming. People start getting beheaded, guillotines, shit got chopped off, shit went up over there because of the slave apartheid. It was an uprising. Pale skinned Europeans was like, we ain't going no more. So they start taking over shit. All right. So they like, look, all right. We got to start blending in with these pale skinned Europeans so we can remain a political power. So they made an alliance with them. They made an alliance with them. We talking about the boule, the sellouts. All right. So-called blacks, the sellouts that was in, <coughs> they was in political power. Look, you say this right here. Look. From this book right here. All right. The resurgence of nationalism. All right. Dr. Rufus O. Jemerson. Book reference. Now this. King Leopold. The first. All right. Look at what they was calling him. He was the holy emperor. And defender of the Roman church. King Leopold the first was a mulatto. That means he was mixed with Moorish blood and he was mixed with pale skin European blood. He was a mulatto. He was the Holy Roman Emperor, fam. But they watch. Watch what happened, though. Watch what happened. <coughs> watch what happened. So you can wonder why the hybrid Europeans. The pale faced Europeans, you wonder why a lot of them, they still got like a deep resentment for our people because of the slave apartheid that we did with them. Now, watch this. Watch this, though. You said King, you said King Charles, right? King Charles, you know what happened to him? King Charles, because of him selling out, you know what happened to him? It's in right here. Look at him. He's getting beheaded. He's getting, this is his father, getting his head cut off. Because remember what we told you and we showed you the how it's going up over there with the French Revolution. Right? It's going up over there with the French Revolution. It's all going down 1789 over there in Europe. It's a whole uprising over there. So they starting to panic. They like, oh, shit, what we finna do? King Charles, like, what was King Charles, as you see? King Charles, the son of King Charles I, whose nickname was so-called Black Boy. He was the king of England. You see what's going on? This is King Charles II. Dark complexion more. He was not a pale skin. All right? That's why we study the past. It say he was the king of England, Wales, France, and Scotland. Look what he was the king of. England, Wales, France, Scotland. Hibernia, Spain, and Ireland. He called it everywhere. Damn near. It is important that we begin to dialogue about the history that is currently being taught in these so-called schools of higher education. This dialogue cannot simply end at the governmental level. We must inc also include the churches in this dialogue. The churches was in on it. Fam, I might do a part three to this.
This shit's strong. The churches was in on it, fam. They were all, they all was in on it, G. So then you'll see this right here, like, what who else was selling out? Who else was selling out? And you will say this. It say the deep seated hatred of pale skinned Europeans toward so-called blacks wonder whether having held so-called blacks in bondage reaped enormous wealth from their coerced labor and built a world class economy and hegemony from them and warrant such hatred from their overlords. So back up. So our people was selling out and they was breeding, having babies with pale skinned Europeans at the same time. Why? Because they wanted to remain in political power and control. You see this? This is what was going on. Then you will say, hold up. You will say, well, what the hell else was going on? It say, in addition, a majority of the people of so-called color whose forefathers and foremothers were enslaved, whose parents and self are mired in poverty, devalued and hopeless, are stricken with the Stockholm Syndrome, whereby they end up identifying as an oppressor more than themselves. Fi family, community, and race who systematically and overtly rejects them. See that? The psychosis. Trying to blend in with something else, you reject your own people. Look at this. Now we go to an explanation on why so-called pale-faced Europeans. Watch this. This shit finna blow your mind. Look, it say why they were ruled and despotically oppressed by the so-called blacks who brought them civilization and Christianity. These so-called blacks encompass Europe's nobility. Europe's nobility. Europe's nobility. Why do we say that? Because the people of so-called Europe were dark complexion, like Macbeth. He was a dark complexion, Scottish Moor. Kenneth the Niger. He was the nephew of Kenneth the Niger. He was a dark complexion Moor, like them... Like them, them Shakespeare plays, Macbeth and all that. Can it, Macbeth was a Moor. Duncan the first and all, all of these fam was dark complexion. Constantine was dark complexion. He was a Christian converted Moorish Scottish king. Constantine the third. Look at the timeline. All of these people were dark complexion. None of them were them. None of them. They were not in political power to make no power moves on the chessboard. You know what I'm saying? Queen Sophia Charlotte and all of them. None of them. Look, Queen Sophia Charlotte, as you go on Netflix right now, and you can find that. And you wonder how she had all that power. How she was able to do what she was able to do. Because she was born into it. Like Matilda. Born into it. See? Political power was all our people. All our people, fam. All our people. Look at Queen Marjorie Lee. Was a dark skinned Pictish woman. 1256. Look at the timelines. Look at the. I'm just showing y'all some stuff off the top right now. Look at the timelines. Look, look at the timelines. Edward the Black Prince. Look at the timelines. James the first, the third, the fifth, the sixth. Look at the timelines. Margaret, Margaret Buford. Look at the timelines. Fam, I'm just going through it. And Bowling. See her? All Morris blood. Anne of Cleves. Just check the timeline. Mary the first. Elizabeth the first. You talking about Queen Elizabeth? Queen Elizabeth was a dark complexion Moor whose face was whitewashed. See that? See how they hide it? They hide it by putting pale skinned Europeans' faces on our history. Queen Elizabeth was a dark complexion Moor. Fam. 
This this shit is wild, G. Mary of Scots. You see her right there. Dark complexion. A descendant of Fergus Moore, the ancestral father of Kenneth McAlpine, Niger Valdub. She was announced queen at the age of six days old. She was six days old and they announced her as a queen. You finna run it. It's in our bloodline. She was the she became the future French queen. You see? Robert the Bruce. All these are Moorish people. You see why knowing the past is crucial? Elizabeth of Bohemia. The Protestant Negress Moorish Elizabeth Stewart, Queen of Bohemia, eldest daughter of James V, dark skinned Danish wife of Anne of Denmark. So when they show all these movies and they got pale skinned Europeans on there, they all lying. It's all a fraud. Queen Harry, Henrietta Marie. All these, look at this. This is why you got to study the past. Queen Anne II, dark complexion. Study the past, man. Queen Sophia Charlotte. She got a Netflix demo on right now. Netflix got her on there right now. King George III, dark complexion. See that? He was the king and his pre predecessors were Germans of the Moorish African descent. Their Moorish blood is traced all the way back to Scottish King Kenneth the Niger through the Scottish King James. The fourth and fifth of England. You see? See, once you study the past, you're going to know your future. This is Queen Char Sophia Charlotte right here. You see? Queen Sophia Charlotte was a descendant of a Portuguese Negro Moorish royal family. She had 15 children. This, see, they hide it right in front of our faces. But we'd be thinking out here like, ah, uh, we was all slave descendants and, and we, we didn't have no power around the world. No, sir. We had all the political power around the world because we the aboriginal and indigenous people around the world. Shed his beam out. And you go right here and you say like, well, what happened to our people to start losing their political power then, fam? What the hell was happening? Good question. It say, these so-called blacks encompass Europe's nobility who identified themselves as quote-unquote blue blood. Hmm. Actually descendant from a black moor progenitors reinforced by inbreeding inbreeding who did they inbreed with bing 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 they inbred with pale skinned Europeans and in turn created themselves as mulattoes this is good. This is heavy, fam. It's heavy, fam. It's heavy. It's heavy, fam. As you see, King Leopold the first was a mulatto. He was the Holy Roman Emperor and defender of the Roman Church. What else happened, though? A group of self-identified blue bloods. Let me let me turn me up, fam. Hold up. Turn me up. Turn me up, Jay. Who you at? Turn me up, fam. Where you at, man? This shit crazy. I know that, though. Where you at? This shit crazy. Hold on. Give me one second, Morris. Give me one second. Give me one second. The antioxidant good. Why don't one you second. own commercial real estate? Yes, you. Why don't you own commercial real estate? Commercials. Get out of here. Get out of here. So what ended up happening? What ended up happening, fam? How did we lose power? We had a we started breeding, making babies with these people. Started making babies with these people. 
pale skinned Europeans. What happened though? What happened though? Once we started breeding with these people, we kept our political power. Our people collected, they kept control and they can kept power. Alright? They kept control and power because at that same time in the 16th century, they was transporting these people to the Americas. You see? So by them transporting these people to the Americas as slaves, they called it the Transportation Act of 1718. Throw some ink on that. Throw some ink on that. See that shit. Need to see that. They called it the Transportation Act. What was the Transportation Act about? Let's find out. Let's find out. You say, the Transportation Act, the preamble which declared that its purpose was both to deter criminals and to supply the colonies with labor. Wow. To supply the colonies with labor. So these people was brought over here to supply the colonies with labor. Exactly. They the outcasts, the criminals. All right. That's the Transportation Act 1718. Check the timeline out. 16th century. British Parliament. Who was running the British Parliament? These people. All right. Blue Bloods. Fam. See. See. And what it say? It say, since in many of his majesty's colonies and plantations in America, there is a great want of servants. Ah, a great want of servants. Servants. You see what was happening? French Revolution, they were selling out. They started breeding, whitening up their soak, their skin, mixing with pale skinned Europeans. Ah, so that well, that's what was going on, huh? So that's why fool over here. This is why he was talking about what he was talking about. When he said this right here. When he said this right here. Oh, Benji boy. Benji. Benjamin Franklin in 1751. When he was like all of Africa is tawny. Asia chiefly tawny. America exclusive of the newcomers, woolly soul. So the newcomers was the people that was being shipped over here in the Transportation Act of 1718. Bing fucking bong. The 16th century, Morris. They was the ones being brought over here. There you have it in black and white. The Transportation Act. Break the mental psychosis. Break the mental invisible chains on our brains. We did it to our own selves. We did it to our own selves. Just like people doing it to our own selves today. Selling out for political power and control. And so-called fiat. The fiat, the political power, and the control to keep the bogus narrative alive, like people as crayon colors. You were brought over as slaves. No, sir. Look, hold up. We got a few more minutes. Y'all want a few more minutes? We got a few more minutes, though. Hold up. We got a few more minutes. So what they do? What they do, though? Hold on, let me pull fam up again. Let me pull, let me pull more up again real quick so you can see. Take it back to the top. What they do? Huh? Watch what they did. Are the blacks, are the Boulay European blacks 
that first came over here with the white European slaves, married into our families, created a whole gen- first generation of, of uh, amalgamated European Moors from indigenous Moors, married into the family, had a whole generation of them, then that generation decided that they now could come into the tribal governments, the natural governments that were here because they was blood, bought blood, and then started switching up the laws. Then the generation after that decides, well, we're going to not just switch up the laws, we're just going to follow the laws of our ancient European forefathers, and because you niggas are under us now, you're going to follow those laws too. And then in that, the European Moors, Black Moors, they become white. Right. Stop right there. Right there. What he just said, how they become white. This is when they started to breed with them Albions and they cooked up the blue bloods. When they cooked up the blue bloods, when they blended in with these people, they said, all right, y'all are under us now. So, you know what? We're going to rearrange everything. We're going to rearrange laws. We're going to rearrange everything. This is what we finna do. And everybody else is about to be underneath us, which goes to right here. Right here. A group of self-identified blue bloods have reflecting are, are reflecting their European cousins among the distinguished light skin color population in New Orleans, Louisiana. They brag about their ties to your Euro- to European forefathers who settled in the new world and forged a racially <coughs> racially mixed. What is that? Racially mixed lineage. This is what a Sid is talking about when he's saying how they blended in and they cooked up a new way to do stuff. And because you niggas are under us now, you're going to follow those laws, too. And then in that, the European Moors, Black Moors, they become white, right? So when he's saying Black Moors, this is when the term Black Moors came into existence. You have Moors, then it, they created Black Moors, the sellout boule, who wanted to stay in political power and control. They cooked up the Black Moors, all right? So you have Moors, then these people, the Blue Bloods, they cooked up Black Moors. You got to keep these, you got to keep this in mind at all times. You got to keep this in mind at all times. When they cooked up the term Blue Bloods, they were paying homage to the pale skinned Europeans who were, like, like Moore just said, were brought over here to the so-called new world. But in reality, this is the old world. This is the America. The Americas is the old world, not the new world. That's another deception that they try to pull. That shit dead though. You see? It's over with for the lies, fam. So what that what else they do? What it say? It say they appear to look down upon mixed or more Africoid so-called blacks. You see, this is the so-called blue bloods. This is the sellout. So the blue bloods, they was over here in the Americas acting like they were superior to their own people. The Africoid Moors or Browns, so-called Browns who have not achieved comparable socioeconomic economic status from inheritance or professional endeavors. Physically, like their European cousins, display veins close to the surface. They talking about pale skinned Europeans though. Right. So the blue and the blue in color, unlike darker black, so-called blacks and browns. Right. This is where the colorism started happening. The colorism. What color are you? Ah, the color cast system. Pick up this book right here. Pick up this book right here. We got a few more minutes. Pick up this book right here. The color cast system was cooked up. 
by the blue blood Goulets. Cast the origins of our discontents by Isabel Wilkerson. Fire. Get this. You need this. You need this like right now. Throw this in your Amazon cart. Get this. Get this ASAP, fam. Straight up. Get this. You need that. You need that. And you say this right here. Let's go a little bit further. And you will say this. You will say prior to the post civil rights era, these quote unquote blue bloods monopolized elite positions and professions among so-called African Americans. This is when the sellout started happening even further. So back to the old world. The European royal families were a fixed mulatto race, all right? With brown and so-called black, with so-called brown and so-called black complexions, with some looking more African, Asian, or pale-skinned European. The underclass pale-skinned majority were called grays or pinks. It's finna get crazy. And look down upon these blue bloods. The ruling Moorish lineage gave them privileges, defied the underclass. Most of the pale skin underclass Europeans were illiterate since education was a privilege privy to the so-called black nobility. Who could afford tutoring or admissions to Latin and Greek private acad academies? The liberal advocates of the Protestant Reformation would demand and eventually achieve publicly funded schools using books in the common language. Yet, commoners were becoming more aware that the civilization and Christianity, which thrived in Europe, was ruled by who? So-called black overlords who were Moors, who were Moors, Queen Sophia Charlotte, King James, King Charles II, the Irish were dark complexion first, everything was dark complexion first. All right. Now let's take it right here real fast. Watch this. Then the traditional Moors that's not with none of this shit, we then start banging on them. Then their offspring now, who they're calling Indians, right? They're starting to use them as a means to be almost in between them. Then under them, you got the Siberians who I told you was brought over here as 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 uh soldiers mercenaries and shit we kicked they ass and then because we didn't send them back we let them squat in the wiki ups and the teepees and shit in the in the plains in the south like that where they could live off the land and all of that and then we put them under the jurisdiction of the morris forest cultures that were running the west like the winter sheiks like the comanche like the apache like the uh panahasawa like the uh that because all of those people represented in context represented the descents the descendants of the ancient Mauritanians, i.e. ancient Moors that was already here. Mm -hmm. Going all the way back down past Queen King Juba and and the uh going out all the way back into the giant times and all that type of shit. So watch this. What basically is what basically happened is you have one group that looks similar to another group, and then they use that similarity to create a familiarity, right? And then once they did that, they brought in another group that looked totally phenotypically different than them to then fight against the group they was trying to amalgamate in by proxy. So for instance, if I have a problem with you today, me and you don't handle it, I go and get the white man to handle you for me. See what I'm saying? That's where this process came from. And thus now we can't control each other, can't support each other, because in the end, 
this European war is working with his slave Slavs, right? That he brought over, and they're both working against me. You hear that? Already here. You hear that? And thus, now we can't control each other, can't support each other, because in the end, this European war is working with his slave Slavs, right? That he brought over, and they're both working against me. Who is so who he's talking about, who I see is talking about is the Blue Bloods. Right? He's talking about the Blue Bloods who are working with pale-skinned Europeans and the so-called Indians for political power and control. So they want to bang against Moors who not with none of that shit. This is this is this is the game, fam. This is why nationality is the order of the day. So you know where you stand at. You know what side you on. You are for the light worker or you a dark worker. You know where you stand at. Ain't no in between. I don't know what I'm finna say or do. No, sir. Ain't no excuses no more. You gotta know what side you on. You for the light or you serving the dark. Period. Ain't nothing else. So the sellouts are working with the pale skin Europeans. Not all pale skin Europeans, for the record, are working for the dark side, though. You got a lot of pale skin Europeans who actually know the truth and they will speak on the truth, especially now because they know what time it is. It's the age of Aquarius right now. Shit is shit is happening right now. Information popping out right now all around the planet. So they ain't got no choice but to start let, telling the truth now because they want to be on the good side when the Moors, like the Prophet Noble Jali said, don't matter how it look, everything is going to return back to the hands of the Asiatics. Who are the Asiatics? Who are the Muslims? First, us, dark complexion Moors, olive complexion Moors, copper complexion Moors. All right? We the first and we going to be last and the last will be first. Pick a side what you want to be on. Ain't no more in between and all. Nah. Pick a side, G. Ain't none of that, none of that wishy-washy shit. You better pick a side. Because this was really going on in the world. This is what's really going on in the world. Already here. You understand? Yeah, and if I can, and I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, you, you're basically breaking down the caste system. Get at the white man. Uh -huh. He is... So it has us, you know, at each other's throats or whatever. To this day. Yeah, based because off of that he, appearance and ethnic background. looking at the white man. Uh -huh. He is not the problem. He or it is a byproduct of the real problem that exists between us as melanated people. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. The minute that we turn to each other and say, look, we're not going to be exploited by these niggas no more. It's over. It's over. Yeah. All of it. Whatever. So did you catch what he said? It's a byproduct. In, at, Listen. Has us, you know, at each other's throats or whatever. To this day. <laughs> based <laughs> off of that he, appearance and ethnic background. Looking at the white man. Uh -huh. He is not the problem. We keep looking at these people. These people are not the problem, fam. It's our own people who keep selling out for power, control, and so-called money. That's the problem. It's not these people. It's these people are the minority. Our people are the majority. They not the problem. It's the sellouts within our own community, our own people. Who are the sellouts? Anybody that's telling you you're a person of color. Anybody telling you that the woman is not supposed to be up there on the throne, sharing the throne with the man. Anybody telling you the woman is supposed to be up there by herself and the man is supposed to be over there somewhere. They the ops, fam. Anybody not teaching you law, history, civics, government. They not teaching you astrology. They not teaching you alchemy. They're not teaching you about health is wealth. 
mentally, physically, as well as spiritually fit. Those are the ops. Those are the ops, G. If they're not teaching you about the Circle 7, hold up. If they not out here talking about this right here, if they not out here talking about the Circle 7, they not out out here talking about love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, those are ops, G. <laughs> Plain and simple. Them the ops. Them the ops. All right? Those are the ops. Study, study, study. Study, study, study. Yeah, based off of that appearance and ethnic background. Looking at the white man. Uh He is not the problem. He or it is a byproduct of the real problem that exists between us as melanated people. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. The minute that we turn to each other and say, look, we're not going to be exploited by these niggas no more. It's over. Mm-hmm. It's over. Yeah. All of it. Whatever, when, when I say it's over, whatever came to your mind, it, that's it. <laughs> it's over. Look what's happening in Africa with Tarare right now. Mm-hmm. We keep looking at these people. They are not just the problem, though. It's our own people. So, Again, know your history, study your past. You study the past, you can make better decisions in the present as well as the future. The present is the gift that will shape the future. Study, study, study. That's why Noble Draw Ali said it three times. Three times. Study the past. Study the past, man. You will know the future. You will know how I go. <laughs> you would know how I go if you study the past. You know? So I hope y'all got something from this beam out. This was strong. I appreciate all y'all that tune in. Each one, teach one. Don't forget, the link is in my bio. The book is available right now for pre order. Right now, hidden in plain sight. Go to my bio. Click the link. It will take you straight there on KhalifaMedia.com. Get that book in your life. Teach it to your children. Teach it to your friends. Teach it to anybody with a mind, a heart that's in a place of they want to seek higher education, to learn, to learn, to know they self. All right? To know their past, their history, our ancient foremothers and forefathers. Man, this is what it's about, G. <laughs> this is what it's about, G. Let me show y'all these books for a slide, though. Yeah. Show y'all these books for a slide, though. You know, you know it's all love, Morse. You know it's all love, Morse. Yeah. Yeah. Get some screenshots. Get some screenshots. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. Let's go. Click the link in my bio. It's on the way. Get that pre order, Morris. Get that pre order. Get that pre order. There it is right there. KhalifaMedia.com. Oh, there it is right there. Love. Yeah. Click that link.
Come on, man. Kings and queens. Kings and queens. It's our time. Pick a side. Pick a side. You gotta pick a side. I might do a part three on this one, though. Y'all want a part three on this one? Y'all want a part three to this one? This shit was strong. Yeah. Might do a, I might close out with a part three to this one, fam. It's a gang of information on this, though. Straight up. Much love to the prophet, Noble Drew Ali. That's uh to the prophet. Might do a part three to this one, man. I appreciate all y'all though. Tap that, tap that link. Click that link in my bio. Get that, get that new fire. Real rap. Get this one in your life though. Oh yeah. To hell or Barbados. They would rather go to hell than to go to Barbados. Wow. Wow. Just think about that. Let that marinate. You would rather they would rather go to hell than go to Barbados. So what was they doing in Barbados? Mmm. What was they doing in Barbados that they'd rather go to hell than go there? Ooh, fam, fam, what was they doing in Barbados? Got to stay tuned for part three. Stay tuned for part three. We're going to make it official. We're going to do a part three to it. All right? Do a part three to it. Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. I self law and master. I appreciate all y'all out there tuning in. And you ones that will tune in. Much love to all y'all out there. Islam.